What's up, Doombots? It's Tony Skinjili here with the review of the Frozen team and what you're going to need to get them and where I think they're going to be good and all that jazz. You've seen these before. Since I can't really do the event right now, we're not really going to talk so much about the event, but this event is different than all the others. So what we will say is this event, unlike the other ones, uh, is specifically gated around uh, getting the team required to unlock Elsa uh, two five star plus one extra hero so that said uh, we're gonna look at the characters we're gonna look at what it's gonna take and what you can get from just progressing through the characters on their own and what uh, the event will mean for you and at the end of it we're gonna do a little bit of a cost analysis to determine like the average cost it'll take to start from zero and uh, unlock Elsa assuming you are just gonna spend money Obviously that number will go down based on what you're willing to do with currency you have, any gems you may have accrued or what like. So quickly to look at the characters, I'm not gonna spend too much time on them. They are good, but let's just go start it. We'll start off with Sven. Um, Sven is, most of the team is wilds, but Sven is particularly one of my favorite characters on the team. One, because he's adorable, and two, because he's kind of like a mini bucket of soldiers if you build the team correctly around him. And there's a lot of fun you can have in this game uh, with assist characters. Uh, think off the top of your head how Scar is so much fun. And when you use Bucket of Soldiers with Scar, there's a whole bunch of attacks going around. That's kind of what Sven does. If you take a quick look at his basic, uh, he deals damage, whatever, no big deal. Damage increases per helpful effect on him, and it increases by 10% per frozen teammate. Now, his assist is basically this attack, for lack of better terms. That's what we have an understanding of what assists do. It's whatever the basic is, unless something else uh, specifically tells it, like Scar hits four times on his assist, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, it's basically gonna be a really big attack, and obviously on the Frozen team, if he has a lot of buffs on him, which he should on the Frozen team, he's gonna do a lot of damage with his basic, which when you're controlling him, means he's going to always be basicing, A, B, B. Now, moving to his special, he is guaranteed crit for his next attack, which is great because if he's assisting, those assists are all going to crit until he takes his next turn. Huge deal. It also restores health to himself, so it's kind of like uh, you can use it at the beginning, and since it's a relatively low-cost ability, uh, you can use it multiple times throughout the course of the event just to make sure that you've ramped up so that when the assists start coming in, he's hitting really hard. Also, if uh, Kristoff is on the team, so on his team, he restores more to both him and Kristoff. Obviously, they're friends. So, great ability. 30% uh, chance to gain an additional guaranteed crit means for two turns, in, as opposed to two different random stacks of it. So it'll last for longer. Uh, when you have this upgrade, he'll be better for longer. When you use this ability, it will last over time. Really, really good kit, especially if you build around it. Uh, the last thing to point out is he has a passive. So that's it. That's pretty much all of his abilities. So his passive, uh, on any teammate losing a helpful effect, he has a chance to gain them. Now you can upgrade it to make that chance a little bit better, but ultimately it's a chance to gain it. And that's a pretty good passive. It doesn't have a proc time or anything. It just happens. Whenever someone loses a helpful effect, he can gain it. If the teammate is Kristoff, he is guaranteed to gain the effect. Huge, right? And on the team, obviously that'll make it a little bit stronger. Uh, this increases the total chance if you upgrade it to 40%, which is a little bit worse than a coin flip. But again, since Kristoff's definitely going to be on it, he'll be fine. I don't think he's a standalone character, but I think he really helps out his team. The last thing is his second passive, which is always fun. Uh, on any teammate performing a basic attack, uh, this character has a 20% chance to assist. Now, since it doesn't specifically say how much damage the assist does, like Scar, it means it's going to be his basic attack or a scaled down version of his basic which will of course be affected by things like crit up and uh, offense attack up or any of those things so because he's on the team uh, and because he always works a Kristoff he's gonna get a lot of extra shots uh, you do have a 30% chance to gain offense up for two turns when he's assisting so he's just gonna keep pummeling people on uh, the other side when you're using the full frozen team I think Sven is a great character on his own and I think on his team he really 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 pulls it out but I think you don't really get the full advantage unless you both use Sven and Kristoff together uh, moving on to Kristoff obviously uh, just to go in order of when we've seen them a uh, Kristoff is weird he's kind of a tank but not really he's more of a standard issue defense character think like a Jasmine um, 
because of how he summons. His basic is, again, not too much damage. The defense characters tend to not do much damage, but uh, deals up to 34% damage target opponent. If Sven is an ally, he will assist. Now, Sven has a chance to assist no matter what Kristoff does, so I'm not sure if this means that he will assist and then he will assist again, uh, or if this is just reminding you that Sven has to assist. Could be both. I haven't really tested it out, um, especially at higher upgrade levels, but uh, if it is, then that line of text isn't really necessary. That's just how the characters work. 50% uh, chance to inflict critical chance down for two turns. Kind of counters certain characters, but, you know, debuffs are debuffs are debuffs. And now that it's a little bit harder to remove debuffs from your team, uh, they tend to be a little bit more meaningful. So, basic, great ability, but uh, on him, I don't think his basic is really why you're, you're unlocking and working on him. His first special, uh, summon a stone troll at the target location, which you get to select. Uh, Stone Troll has health, sure, has 15 defense, that number uh, does tend to go up a little based on his level, and has the following abilities, which it's Stone Character, uh, deal damage, or heal a character. You can have multiple trolls out at a time, I'll repeat, you can have multiple trolls out at a time, so if you get going and you start summoning a whole bunch of these trolls out, it doesn't replace the troll, you just get more trolls. And that means that you can alternate between who heals and who does damage. You can really start powering it up. And uh, technically, because of how Sven works, he might be able to assist them because he gains the chance based on the number of characters on the team, not necessarily if that character is attacking. So like Scar will only assist Lion King characters or has a higher chance. Sven will just assist as long as they're on the team. So this is a really good two-piece combo that I think you'll enjoy using. Uh, especially for things that require wilds, like any of the towers. Just this ability alone kind of sets up everything. But he does have another special closer to an ultimate. Uh, he taunts. For one turn, he gains defense up. If An is an ally, he gains harmful effect immunity for one turn. He grants a helpful effect to target teammate based on their role. Uh, so you have to select a target at the beginning of the attack. And you might just pick to put a guaranteed crit on somebody. You may heal someone who's a little bit weak. Or you may make sure that uh, whoever your support character on the team is gets a little bit quicker on whatever they're supporting, usually a heal, hopefully. Uh, at the upgrade point, you can uh, gain a second taunt. Maybe it's worth it depending on how long the fights tend to go. And I do think this team uh, gets stronger as the fight goes on. So uh, looking at the last thing, his passive, on any teammate's defeat, cleanse all harmful effects on him, Kristoff. Extend the duration of all helpful effects on him by one. Gain two turns of defense up. Restore 90% character uh, health to the character. Uh, if the teammate defeated is Ana, uh, reset all ability magic to full. Fill this character's speed meter. Basically, just immediately take a turn and do something. Now, the one thing I'm not sure about is whether or not it factors the summons as a teammate defeat. Uh, I haven't tested it. Maybe someone has. I Like I said, I haven't unlocked them. Uh, if it does factor the summons as a teammate defeat, whoa he will be taunting for literally ever uh, making him probably one of the best tanks in the game now that it's very difficult to get around tanks in the game um the other the upgrades only increase the health restored which uh, matters as you go further and further in your investment but not so much early overall sven and Kristoff make a really good two-piece combo but clearly they are designed to be a part of the team and now that we've seen the rest of the team we can take a look at them. So we're going to go next to Anna because she's the one mentioned by at least one other character. Um, Anna is the only Kingdom character, I believe, on this team, which is interesting because you might want to use her on the Kingdom team. Let's see if that's viable when we look at her kit. Fierce Flame, deal damage target opponent, 50% chance for a random teammate to assist. Now, here's something interesting. Sven might assist. And then a different teammate might assist because this team has a lot of assists. This team is basically just every single character is Bucket of Toy Soldiers, you know? Um, so that basic giving another assist means that there's a lot of damage potential on the team. Obviously, you don't, there are characters you don't necessarily want to summon. But since teammates do count uh, basically anyone on the team, as you've seen from other abilities where Scar calls summons and summons on a teammate, but that counts for his hyenas, etc., 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 huge huge potential damage and huge potential multi-targets if you've ever seen something like this if you have big pete and use pete's special and then a whole bunch of people just come in and mess somebody up that's kind of what these characters do just on the regular so this is looking really strong 
If an opponent deals damage to allied Elsa, 25% chance to counterattack with this ability, which I think will also have a 50% chance to gain an assist, which is absolutely absurd. Stop hitting Elsa, which is crazy because obviously you probably want to take out Elsa. She's the legendary of the team. Uh, and yes, it is confirmed she is legendary, so great. Uh, if assisting teammate is a frozen character, they gain offense up for plus zero turns. I think that means they get it for this attack, um, but that also might just be a typo. And then the uh, last upgrade is obviously just damage. Her first special, grant haste to self and adjacent teammates for one turn, increase speed meter of adjacent teammates by 30%, and additional 5% uh, per helpful uh, effect affecting them. So this can be huge for the entire team. But also, this is incredibly huge on the Kingdom team if you're using very specific characters that put buffs on your team, or a spell that buffs your entire team. Um, because it doesn't independently say any specific by name character on that ability. However, on the next one, grant one magic effect for all abilities to adjacent teammates. Uh, this again does not specifically affect only the characters on the Frozen team, so if you do put her on a Kingdom team, all of the first lines of text, including this one, will affect anybody. So you can give adjacent uh, energy to Mickey if you put him on a kingdom team. If Kristoff is a teammate, he gets defense up for a turn. If he's already affected by defense up, it gets another stack. Great. Increases the haste duration, more speed meter. This is one of the abilities you really want to lean in on, especially on her team, but definitely outside of it. I think she's probably one of the best characters overall from the team that you can easily farm just from this ability which is obviously a four shot uh, her last special her ultimate deal some damage to target opponents inflict offense down on all opponents for one turn 30 percent chance to decrease speed meter of all opponents by 10 percent and now we see why blue fairy magic was nerfed this is crazy <laughs> this is absurd offense down on the entire team and it seems to be ready on turn one means that everyone's opening salvo is going to be a nightmare keep in mind this ability does not stick to frozen characters making her amazing on the kingdom team wink wink nudge nudge anyway gain one haste for all turn with one upgrade and it increases the amount of speed to decrease these are abilities i do like to invest in because i really prefer abilities that change how it works as opposed to abilities that just increase damage especially on characters that aren't damage specific characters when the character's job is to hurt people then i care more about how much they hurt people uh, her leadership ability on battle star if Kristoff is a teammate then increases speed meter by 20 percent per frozen teammate including himself I'm really happy they added the including himself thing basically it means Kristoff goes first on the frozen team every time doesn't matter how fast everyone else is he goes first because when the speed meter is increased nothing else matters and since it's 20 percent per frozen teammate on the full frozen team 100 percent when the teammates health falls below 60 percent they get defense up healing over time, restoring 10% of their max health over two turns, and extend the duration of one random helpful effect. Okay, health restored is increased 5% by a frozen teammate. Okay, if affected teammate is Elsa, also increase speed meter by 30%. Now I do believe this is Elsa speed meter and not hers, it might be a little confusing, but that's what I've seen so far. Now her leadership ability seems to be incredibly good uh, on clubboard defense, but I don't necessarily know if it's the most important part of the team. Now, obviously, if there are no other ones, clearly you would use this, but I think you're going to see real quick that there are other options. That said, I think for defense or AI, if you're going to place this team on Sorcerer's Tournament defense, if you're going to, uh, much like the Incredibles, where Mr. Incredible uh, is very good uh, passive for defense, but uh, Elastigirl is significantly better when you're controlling the team or using them, either PvP, Sorcerer's Tournament, PvP Arena, etc., 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 you uh you want to use that but this really does set up what the team is capable of doing on turn one so it is a very good ai passive and clearly you can tell by just how many lines of text it has it's doing something right no notes on these clearly just increases defense up and then more health and this is again her leadership ability so it keeps the team alive absolutely phenomenal i think she is one of the best all-around characters i think she unlike some of the other characters you're going to see and have seen already works uh, outside of the team just as well i think obviously she gets a little bit benefit from being in the team but other than that i i, I really am impressed with her kit and now we move to the other non-wilds character the mythical character in olaf so 
Uh, great news is you're going to need a mythical character, so if you're going to work on this team, you're going to get Olaf. Uh, as far as what he does, he is a support character, so keep that in mind as you move uh, towards the rest of the kits that help affect specifically support characters versus offense, defense, etc. His basic is nothing. It has a chance? No. It reduces the target opponent's speed meter by 10%. Of course, this happens when he assists. So if his assist uh, targets him, if someone uh, accidentally calls him or intentionally calls him to assist, he's going to also reduce the target's speed meter, which is going to be huge against characters like the Kingdom team who are constantly getting speed. Uh, pretty much not going to do damage. It's really all about that kit. So this is a very important upgrade on him. And again, support characters and defense characters don't really do amazing damage so you're gonna have to look at the rest of his kit to see where his value is his special living the dream grant target teammate tactics for one turn extend the duration of all helpful effects by one yes that includes tactics that's the reason why you get one turn of tactics and then it goes to two grant continuous healing restoring up to 90 percent health over two turns if target teammate is anna or elsa grant harmful effect immunity for two turns uh, i believe that the order you read this is the order it will occur. So the first thing that happens is tactics, the second thing that happens is extend, then they gain uh, continuous healing, which means they won't have multiple stacks of it, and the same thing with this, it just gives them there. So pretty nice ability, pretty cool when you can single target, I don't know, Sven, wink, wink, because Sven's gonna do a lot of work. Uh, but if you need to uh, heal a character, this will be okay as like a longevity heal, especially if you believe your team or the opponent are going to single target Elsa, Anna, or basically whomever. Obviously, they're not going to be able to get through that first turn taunt, but they're going to get some value out of it. For each harmful effect on the target teammate, grant an additional continuous healing effect up to a maximum of one. So, I mean, it, it it's a very long way of saying if there are multiple harmful effects on the teammate, they get one more continuous, uh, unless this is worded incorrectly and they mean per each one I, I i don't know it does seem like it would have been easier to say that but i don't know you'll see as you get uh, 15 harmful effects on a character this team is really good at removing harmful effects on its own so you shouldn't worry too much about it uh his second special his ultimate uh, inflict charm for one turn we've all seen charm is pretty good especially against stronger opponents grant continuous healing to teammates with lowest health restoring 90% health over two turns. So it's a single target heal, but it doesn't heal immediately, it heals over time, which is kind of how this team works. This team is clearly designed to go long and not necessarily uh, win a fight very quickly, uh, more or less. It's kind of control the fight as it goes. 50% chance to gain evasion and increase the amount of health restored. Uh, it's a low cooldown, so you know you can use it quite frequently, especially if he's next to Ana and she's giving him magic, but suffice it to say, it's a pretty decent ability. Uh, it's a defensive ability because it takes a character out of the fight, but it also lets you heal up a character that needs to. Uh, last thing is his passive on defeat, 5% chance to revive, 10% max health stored. If Ana is a teammate, fill her speed meter by 100%. If Elsa is a teammate, chance to revive is 50% instead. He might come back. If Elsa's around, he's pretty likely to come back. He's more of a coin flip to come back. Uh, and that's kind of one of the things I do like about some of the design of these characters is they do something good outside, but they do something better when you use them intentionally. That shows good character design and team design. I am a huge fan of it. The weird thing about this is I don't know if that 5% chance to revive only affects here and goes to 15, or if it makes it 55. I don't know if it matters that much, but interesting to see and 5% chance to activate uh, so that makes it a 10% chance to revive with 10% health numbers are weird like I don't what's the difference between 5% chance to revive and 5% chance to activate doesn't really seem like much it's kind of saying the same thing maybe it isn't I don't know but we'll see since it always has a whatever doesn't matter ability seems cool that's it Olaf is probably the weakest independent member of this team but definitely the strongest member uh, when it comes to being a part of the team because he will keep them alive uh, I wouldn't necessarily count him as a mythical character for anything you would need a mythical for I think there are still better options but on this team very useful and that brings us last but not least to the legendary unlock and yes this is the first legendary in the game 
Elsa. In order to unlock her, you require five of these characters, or sorry, five total characters at five star. Four of them are these characters. The last one is any hero. Great. Now, uh, let's take a look to see what the first legendary character looks, because there are some characters in the game that are already really good and aren't legendary. Ooh, that's a lot of abilities. Starting with the fact that she is wilds, no problem. Basic, ice magic, deal, pretty decent damage to target opponent, 30% chance to gain offense up for one turn at the start of this ability, which means it'll do more damage. Uh, if empowered, perform the following attack, uh, deal up to 22 damage, chain to one to two opponents. So when she hits her empowered buff, which you'll see later, she hits really hard on her basic. Again, assists happen, plus one to maximum chain amount. I think that believe it goes from uh, one to three instead of two to three because it says to maximum and not plus one to total chain amount, which would make it two to three. Anyway, 50% um, damage, it's her basic. It needs to be damaged, no notes. For special, 53 damage target opponent and adjacent allies. Remember, that's the V or the W, depending on who you target. Uh, reduce each affected opponent's speed meter by 10%. Wow. Uh, inflict silence on target opponent for one turn. Wow. 50% chance to gain haste for one turn. Wow. It's like the best of all of the spells in the game on one ability. It slows characters, reduces speed meter, inflicts silence on a target, and she has a chance to gain haste. Crazy. If empowered, inflict silence on adjacent opponents for one turn too. We're going to really have to see what this empowered is, right? Because it's starting to look like these abilities only get stronger when something makes her empowered. Uh, level 2, guaranteed to gain haste. Uh, probably worth it. Uh, the damage, you know, she is the damage dealer, so to definitely worth it. But the guaranteed haste seems really important. Uh, this is a four uh, magic attack, so it will take a little bit of time. You may not always want to lead on it, but then again, depends on what your fight is, right? Second special, increased duration of two random helpful effects on this character by one. Deal up to 54 unavoidable damage to all opponents. This is a fun word. It means can't be dodged. It, that's it. Get, blind doesn't seem to affect it, it just hurts. Uh, damage dealt is increased by 5% per helpful effect on this character. Team puts a lot of helpful effects on, probably gonna be good. Here's the if empowered again, perform a follow up attack, it then does it again. This attack does not appear to be unavoidable, but uh, as a result, uh, it is a slightly higher damage attack. 20% uh, chance to inflict stun for one turn. Who do you inflict stun for? Haven't seen it yet. No one has, actually. So, we'll find out. Uh, the way it reads is, uh, it's to all opponents. So if this empowerment means all of the opponents are stunned, or have a chance to be stunned, that's great. If it is target, I'd like to read that a little bit more, but all in all, either way, it's great. It's just whether or not it's great or buku ridiculous. 10% uh, bonus chance to inflict stun per helpful effect on this character. Uh, duh. Seems really good. And of course, increased damage. Uh, the one thing I will note is this is an expensive spell. You're not supposed to use this too often, so you either do want to lead with it or you want to use it to take control of a fight when you really need to uh, get a turn into res or take that heal from Olaf that's over turns. Honestly, a lot of her abilities seem like you don't want to use them until she's empowered, but some of them might just be worth it. So, first passive. At the start of each turn and on use of a special ability, which is, you know, her either of the two, uh, gain one spirit up to a maximum of four. Gain 2% increased offense and 2% increased defense per spirit. Okay, that's a lot of everything, right? Uh, obviously this number goes up to five at level two, so this is a very important upgrade. Uh, on start of turn, this character has four spirits performing the following. Game empowered. Deal up to 33 damage to all opponents, gain harmful immunity for a turn, if she's empowered. Abilities gain additional effects, gain 8% offense and 8% increased defense. What? Just the sheer value of stats that she gets just for being present in a fight is mind boggling. Uh, it almost incentivizes you to use all of her specials on cooldown just to make sure they go up. Now you might have to do a little bit of a dance around the characters to make sure that you're using them correctly and keep the buffs up, but ultimately everything I've seen on her kit screams amazing. The last thing I will note is that she does not have a leadership ability, so you do kind of have to lean on Ana's 
for the team. That said, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that Anna's leadership ability is one of the best leadership abilities, but it is important for her team. Now, I know a lot of people might have thought, hey, legendary character might have a leadership, blah, blah, blah. But that's kind of the point. Uh, she doesn't, and that's kind of a big deal. The only other thing I'll show you is that instead of that, she has a second passive. Uh, if this character begins the battle with full health, that's interesting. We're going to go into that in a second. The first time they would be dealt damage that reduces their health to zero, instead perform the following. Cleanse harmful effects or remove taunt from this character, gain stasis, gain a shield equal to 15% max health. If on as a teammate, grant her one magic and evade. Seems great. This is going to be absolutely phenomenal when you place the team on clubboard defense because as of right now, when you fight a team in clubboard defense, the damage you do to the team does not stay. You just lose your team. Hopefully that's something that's changed. Uh, also, in every game mode, uh, PvP, etc., this will always matter. There is, however, one game mode where it won't. That is tower. So, if you go into a tower and she's not at full health, this ability will not happen. And it seems like this is specifically worded this way to kind of let you know that she might be a little too powerful for tower. Um, and that might be true. But you do have plenty of other wilds options with this team, let alone just her. And even then, this ability is pretty okay uh, just everywhere else that you don't really need it in tower. I think this is more of making the tower not so much a cheat code when you have Elsa, but still letting you have a little bit of a fun challenge in the tower modes. That said, great ability. Everything she does is ridiculous. Uh, on her team and off of it does seem incredibly good, but I don't have the mental space to envision teams with her right now. Uh, I do like how the team works together so well that I would probably say if you went through the hassle of getting all the characters for it, you may as well use her on that team and don't really worry about making hybrids. That said, you know, sky's the limit and space is the place. Um, I don't know where you would use a five-star Elsa, considering the fact the rest of your characters are relatively stronger. We also do have to remember that five-star versions of characters aren't necessarily as good as uh, six or seven-star versions of characters. Even at gear and level parity, they do tend to lag behind a little bit. So. I would be shocked, uh, not necessarily mad, but shocked if the five-star version of this team was uh, capable of defeating uh, seven-star versions of Kingdom teams or uh, downtown villains even, just because the star differential should be good. I would be a little pleasantly surprised if this character could maybe go from six star and up, if the team didn't need to be that far away. But ultimately, I do feel like if this team was so good at 5-star where everyone else in the roster needs that 6th or 7th star to be competitive, that might leave a bad taste in some people's mouths. But uh, I don't know. We'll only see because I don't think many people have Elsa yet, considering the fact that the event has not officially gone live. Now, uh, let's talk about where I think this team is going to be used. Uh, obviously, I'm, I hate to say it, but Club... Uh, dungeon and club war are great places for this now club dungeon i hate to say it because technically once you've beaten it uh, or got to level 20 once clearly it's not a challenge to do it anymore no problem i think this team is a little bit less effective at club dungeon specifically because they're kind of a ramp up team but they'll probably be good for pve content as it comes out in the future as new game modes are released etc uh, I think this team is fine for PvP Arena as you're climbing, but always keep in mind, it's always not who you unlock, but it's who you finish, so you might not necessarily get the value of a 5-star version of this team that other players who've been playing for as long if not longer and invested in characters like Shan Yu and some of the Kingdom characters are getting out of their very strong 7-star characters. But they do have value in a lot of places, especially if you're newer in the game and feel like, hey, I really want these characters, this will be a great option for you. I think that they're a good Sorcerer's team overall, and I think obviously the stronger they are, the better they will be. I think that they are a, inherently a very good Sorcerer's Tournament defense team, uh, according to what their kit says. Now, obviously, it only matters when we see it, 
but I do think this team is phenomenal. Uh, prior to this, I also on paper looked at the Incredibles and thought they were very good, but after using them, I was a little bit less than impressed when compared to just some of the other characters in the game. That said, the Incredibles never had a legendary character, and I think this team might work a little bit better together than the Incredibles, but we'll see. One other thing I want to mention now, and this is the last part, uh, I am not advocating for anyone getting this team or against it. I can only tell you my opinion. My opinion is that I'm not convinced after the last couple of events that this team is going to impact my roster as greatly. So while I might uh, make some strides in trying to unlock her on this pass, which means I might spend money, I'm not convinced I will do that yet and ultimately I do have 10 days to make that decision so I'll just probably wait for other players, trust me there's other content creators out there who are more than willing to spend the money to see what it looks like. I'm going to wait to see what they're doing with the characters at both 5 and 6 star because if they're great at 5 or 6 star they're obviously going to be phenomenal at 7. If they're not great at 5 and they're not great at 6 then it doesn't matter if they're great at 7 I'll just wait you know. Um, but now the good news is all of these characters are farmable So even if you do miss out on Elsa this pass when her event comes back around probably in about three months or so You can make sure you work on them as much as you want to make sure you unlock her uh, The one thing I do want to show everybody is uh, a quick little financial analysis now again It's your money you get to do what you want with it but this is what I've come up with when it comes to how much on average it would cost a player to unlock Elsa. White she! All right, guys. So if you take a quick look, uh, this is down, dirty, and dumb. Uh, this is making some very clear assumptions. The first is if you buy the big bundle, right, uh, which is $99.99 USD, your mileage may vary depending on where you are, you are guaranteed a three-star version of the characters. No question. Uh, that's great. That's a great starting kit for the team. It'll let you experience them hunt and you also get other abilities. No problem there. But this is a hundred dollars for four characters at three star. I think this is a very reasonable amount of money considering it's twenty five dollars per character. And honestly, it's a little bit cheaper than buying the individual packs as we go on. But I do think uh, you get a lot of value out of this. If you are inclined to be able to spend a hundred dollars in a mobile game, by all means, this is a great purchase. You get four characters. Two of them are wilds. One of them is mythical, and one of them is kingdom. Great. Should be fine. Uh, the next step is the individual packs. Now, you still only get 50 shards of each character, but they do cost $30 each. So if you look at the value, uh, if you were to buy each individual pack and not the big bundle, you're spending about 20 extra dollars. You get a little bit more stuff in each thing overall, so it does kind of balance out. You do get $20 worth of additional materials, I guess. But if you're looking to just unlock the characters, it is cheaper to use the big bundle the 9999 now combining those bundles uh, if you spend it all you'll spend about 220 dollars uh, for 100 character shards which of course will put you 45 character shards away from unlocking elsa now if you're willing to spend that much on the characters and get them that far in you're probably also you know relatively interested in getting Elsa, right? If you're $219 in, what's the next $100? Well, we have a little bit of an issue. Uh, that, uh, Not an issue, just information that I want you to have. That information is, uh, in the store, there is something called the Frozen Lucky Draw Pack, where it says 1,800 gems, and you have a chance of pulling 8 to 330 of any of the characters. Uh, I want you to just know, in case you didn't, that it's not all four characters, uh, eight to 30, 330 of each. It's a chance of pulling at least one of those four characters in eight to 330. I have bought it twice, and so far I have gotten 16 spend shards. Therefore, I'm not really feeling lucky on that. So if we do want to consider how to get the last 45 shards, assuming you do not want to spend energy or time or resources or exchange credits on uh, farming those characters um, if you do then 219 dollars is pretty par for the course it's literally 
100 character shards. You can't spend less than that, really, and reliably get them to 100, but you might be able to farm those last 45 shards if the need be. That said, if you check the missing shards, uh, if you check those draw packs that are in the store, the ones that are 800 gems per character, the expected value of a draw pack is that you would pull about 10 shards, you know, some, most will be 8, sometimes you'll get 12 or 14, but you should get between 9 and 10 per, and the reason why that's important is because if there's 45 shards you need and you're averaging between 9 and 10 shards per pull, some are more than others obviously, you only need to open 5 of these packs. To open 5 of the packs of each of the 4 characters you need, it will cost 16,000 gems, which is purchasable in the game for $102, which is a $99 pack if you assume you didn't buy the super special one, the first time purchase, and a dollar pack to even out. Now clearly you probably have some gems, you might not need to spend this exact amount, but I'm going to make this assumption absolutely assuming you just started playing the game yesterday and you want all these characters. That said, I don't think you'll be able to do the 5 star event at level 10, doesn't matter. Uh, overall, the total expected cost to unlock Elsa, starting from zero, is about $322. So, that information is for you. If you want to know what's the fastest way to unlock Elsa, the answer is spend $320, give or take based on what you have. If you want to know um, what you're getting if you target farm, then you're knowing that over time it will you know over three months you'll have saved 322 dollars to unlock elsa if you don't think you need her right now uh, my personal opinion is i'm still going to wait i don't know if five star elsa is going to be impactful enough to me i don't know if six star elsa is going to be impactful enough to me for me to add an additional 150 or $200 to this total to max her out. I don't necessarily think that three to $400 for a full team uh, the week it's released is an unreasonable amount of money, especially if we're talking about completing that team or getting them all to seven star. But I can understand that some players might not be comfortable spending that much money on a mobile game. And that's totally fine, but this will let you know what you're willing to accrue. Uh, Elsa is currently worth about $322, but it's not just Elsa, it's the entire team. So if you do like the team, uh, start working on them now. Feel free to spend any money it will take to get them. Just always keep in mind that the team has to do something for you, and if Club Conquest defense team and offense team is worthwhile, you are definitely going to get your value out of it there will be a phenomenal version of a defense and offense team. Uh, as far as Sorcerer's Tournament and PvP Arena, I'm going to uh, wait to see a little bit more from other players who are more willing to be early adopters than I am right now and determine that. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, like I said before, I'm not in the business of telling people how to spend money. I'm in the business of informing people what their money is going to get them. Uh, comment below and let me know what you think. Are you going to spend money on Elsa? Are you just willing to wait a little bit and see uh, what she is and maybe get her on the next pass? Where do you think they're going to be good based on the kits you've seen? Uh, just let me know what your feedback is. I'm impressed by what they do, but uh, because I've seen a couple things and been impressed before, I'm going to assume that I'm an idiot and I'm going to wait a little bit and see if uh, someone smarter than me figures out that they're worth my time. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Skinjui, and I'll catch you later.